Hi, everybody. This is Matthew Pose with Pose Acoustics. And GT Grabber, um, who donated $10, has another question. And so he said, thanks so much. He believes me. He did, he did some research on room gain. He believes me in what I said, but he said that he's finding that with two boxes and applied room gain to both, the sealed box did perform better um, with low end extension, but only below 10 hertz. And the port sub performed better from 10 hertz to 35 hertz, with the peak being at the port tuning frequency of 17 hertz with plus 10 dB. When designing the box, a modified full Marty took care to account for chuffing. And I don't think I'd push them hard enough to hear it anyway. I believe you when you say sealed would sound better, but still think prefer the overhead. So I'll just say a couple things about this before I go on. Um, you Technically, you could probably model uh, room gain in WinISD, but it doesn't have any native ability to do that. So when you say you modeled it, I'm, I'm wondering what you did. So it, there's no um, shell filter, which is what I would use to model that. The only thing it has is it has a filter that you can apply that is, because you can't just use PEQ, that would be tricky to make that work right. I suppose maybe you could chain a bunch together to kind of create an appearance of room gain, but um, it's got something that is a language transform circuit. You can modify the parameters of the language transform circuit to, to behave very similarly to room gain. And then you could apply a high pass filter to the ported version. I don't know if you need to do that even actually. I don't think you need to do that. Yeah, you could just you could just probably just use that. So if you did that, maybe that would get you close. But you the, the issue is when you're modeling it, you also have to make sure you understand how to model it. It seems unlikely that there would only be a advantage below 10 hertz. It should have been an advantage higher than that. Um, the other thing is that modeling port chuffing is tricky because the the WinISD uses a very very simplistic model, and many many times what I found is that reality doesn't match the models for port chuffing, and it was only it was years ago now, but it was only more recently that I was able to do some measurements of air velocity that I was able to figure out some of the problems. So I'll just warn you that um, the port chuffing measurement that people use, which is keeping the air velocity below a certain point by a certain kind of port, the assumptions in that are often not met, including that the flaring that they do in the model would actually be a much more significant flare than the flares you typically can just buy off the shelf. And so that plus some other issues, like the model tends to be completely wrong with small ports. So once the diameter gets too small, it also tends to be wrong with uh, low, high aspect ratio ports. So slot ports that are really thin in height and really wide, um, it'll it'll give inaccurate numbers around chuffing, substantially so. And so you do need to be very careful with how you do that. Um, you know, in, in, I'll just say my experience is what I've said many times before. I've so I've been there and done that with ported subs, and I ended up ultimately uh, moving away from them in favor of sealed subs. And because I get review samples, um, and in many cases they are ported, I get opportunities to revisit my assumptions and then still walk away with the same conclusion. So I prefer that. Um, I'm going to add a second little part to this video. I don't know if my wife intended this, but somebody... Somebody else asked a question, the polyester pimp. He said, all right, if you make a video, I think the more interesting question would be, oh no, the bass response in my small room seems better off. It seems better off when using my speakers in full range mode rather than integrating a subwoofer. Is this okay? And then he says, I use REW in the near future for some concrete evidence, but I think a lot of hobbyists and DIYers, and I'm guilty of this, get caught up in the minutia of thinking they can get an uncompromising experience in a very compromised room. Cheers and thank you to your wife. Um, I think in, all of that stemmed from this other idea, which is that often subwoofer, subwoofer integration is like by far the most important part of all this, whether it's this idea of chuffing and room gain and sealed versus ported, all of that is way down on the list compared to subwoofer integration. And there's a lot of people who have this idea that big full range towers sound substantially better than, um, than a speaker with subwoofers even if in dynamic capabilities, the speaker and subwoofer system would be much better. And I've said many cases before, a subwoofer is almost always going to be better than a full range tower speaker because the subwoofer is more optimized. 
There are speakers like the RBHs that Gene has, which have literally subwoofers built into them. They're part of what make up this, this tower, where obviously the bass isn't going to be better in the sense that dynamic range, extension, all of that is the same because it is a subwoofer that's being used. But that is not a good location for subwoofers. And so you end up running into some issues. The advantage of it is it's easy to get everything time aligned and integrated and phase aligned in that kind of si si uh, system. Whereas when you put the subwoofers in more optimal positions, it's a bit more work to get it all right. And so a lot of people do find that it's easier to get pretty good sound out of their subwoofer system when they just, I'm sorry, out of their speaker system when they just use a four inch tower than when, they, when they try to integrate the subs. I also hear things people say like, well, the sub is boomy or it's droning or that's just, you've got to work on your integration. This is not integrated right. There's no reason why, I mean, you should just think about it logically. A highly optimized low frequency reproducer is not going to boom or drone more than the smaller, crappier woofer is in the tower. It's just got more output. So you got to fix that. And if you don't like deep bass, that's a whole nother issue. All right. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. Two in one. And uh, thank you for these videos, uh, for the questions I should say that allow me to create these videos. Like and subscribe on the channel. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, the donations are helpful. I appreciate that. And we'll keep having stuff coming. So keep on watching.